Hi guys, I'm reshooting this video again because uh, apparently only my voice came. Actually, I had, uh, attached a cable for extended screen. So, um, this is like a screen recording itself. But uh, somehow that extended screen and the recording, something mismatched technically. So, my voice came but uh, there was no video. Uh, so, I'm reshooting this video again. Uh, I'll be deleting that video uh, and only this would be there then for the mock uh, paper 3 that's 14 as a question 9. So uh, like I was mentioning in the other video, you definitely would be having one question uh, in your ADC exam which would be solely based on radiographs. Actually there can be two or three. Uh, but definitely, definitely you'll have at least one question. So, and it won't be like an extraordinary question or something. It would be something which you would have seen at least once in your basic uh, dental graduate life. Uh, of course, you are expected to have understanding of the normal anatomic structures that you see on the radiograph and a little abnormal, which are like the day-to-day -day cases, example, you know, how would the extra appear uh, if there's a lesion because of a periopical infection? And what are the normal landmarks that you're supposed to know so you don't confuse them with any other lesion that might coexist in that area? So, uh, if you think you are not so strong in radiography, uh, please open White and Faro, read through it, or you can just download a slide share PPT on the normal anatomical landmarks in dentistry. On radiographs and uh, just go through it uh, it's not only for the exam purpose you as a clinician are supposed to be aware of such things because when you're in college you can of course uh, take opinions and educate yourself with the help of your friends colleagues assistant professors professors etc but uh, when you go on to open your own clinic and you are the sole responsible person and a patient comes to you 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 should be knowing what you're seeing on the radiograph because uh, you are uh, going to decide the treatment for the patient and uh, the patient has faith and trust in you that whatever you will decide would be for his benefit. Just imagine yourself as a patient going to a dentist. Would you be comfortable if the dentist is not aware of the dentistry that he's doing? No, right? So hence, uh, these things matter a lot. It will boost up your self-confidence and your gut feeling will support you and you will not feel less confident while treating a patient. So anyways, uh, some basic, uh, this question is pretty straightforward. Also see, from the ADC perspective, this question, I mean, such kind of questions are really, really good because they have just one short sure answer they are not the unmarked question okay you you know the questions which have one short sure answer are not an unmarked question basically it means it's a highly scorable question so do not make a mistake in this understood so let's start uh what structures the arrow is pointing at now um like i mentioned in my previous video i always say that whenever you're examining a radiograph be it any radiograph an opg or a periopical do not jump on to see the problem right away uh as a clinician i'm talking to you about uh, exam perspective i'll come again so as a clinician uh, suppose the patient came with a problem in three six a periopical infection or something and you took an iopa to see the status of it uh, don't directly jump on to examine 236 and give your diagnosis and right away jump onto the treatment. No, you're supposed to start by examining the most peripheries of the radiograph to see if there is any abnormality in the bone, then you will examine the other teeth and then finally you will come to the problematic tooth. And that way, in case there is a problem in any of the teeth or the bone or any surrounding structure, you would be informing this to the patient and then you would be focusing on the chief complaint. If you start focusing on the chief complaint right away, the patient is going to contribute to the conversation and you will forget all about uh, telling him if any other problem existed, which would amount to medical negligence, you know. So you don't want to do that. Uh, so you examine the other things and then you will jump onto the actual area. Now, in this particular scenario, the arrow is already being pointed at. I'm sure you must all know by now, this is lamina dura. I'm not even reading the options as of now because I want to... Uh, be sure that you understand what is lamina dura. Lamina dura is just a radiographic structure. It is a very dense cortical bone, hence it appears more radiopaque than the rest of the bone. And it forms the attachment apparatus to the tooth. 
there will be always a radial lucent area next to the lamina dura that is the periodontal ligament space and the lamina dura is composed of the dense cortical bone the insertion of periodontal ligament which is called as sharpest fibers and on the other side that is where the root is it's cementum and periodontal ligament again now this is a sign of a healthy tooth if there is a periodontal infection or a resorption and kylosis this would disappear so the presence of this is indication of a good good supporting structure of the tooth okay so let's see what the options are options are periodontal ligament uh, ligament would always be a soft tissue so it would appear radial lucent the arrow is marking at a radiopic structure tooth cementum the arrow is not pointing at the tooth cementum it's stopping right here lamina dura yes interseptal cancellous bone would be this and this but the arrow is not pointing at that hence the answer lamina dura now what structure is located in the encircled area so again this is a periapical iopa uh, you see two centrals you see laterals nothing abnormal out here and the encircled area is this now what is this this is a uh, incisive foramen this is not an incisive canal i mean of course the canal starts here but canal is a long tube like structure this is like the half section of the foramen which would look like this and it's rightly at this position now what is this my arrow where this is this anterior nasal spine so do not confuse your anterior nasal spine with this area anyways the anterior nasal spine is a radiopic structure so you should anyways not be confusing with this so let's see what the options are periodontal cyst uh, why this cannot be a periodontal cyst? Because cyst is a nice balloon-like structure. First of all, with a nice corticated border, this this is not that. Okay, incisive foramen is right answer. Anterior nasal spine, like I've explained. Now, this candidate, whoever has solved this, has marked it wrong. See, in my mocks, whenever you mark something wrong, it's going to show like cross. Uh, when you are solving the mock, it would be just uh, blank, like there would be all white spaces and just the options. And once you click on it and submit. You will get a feedback and in the feedback it would be mentioned here and there would be some feedback written here if required. But if this is a simple question like this then I will not have provided a feedback because I expect you to know this basic thing. Floor of the nasal cavity. Floor of the nasal cavity will come further on the top so no that is not the answer. So even if you were confused you can eliminate the other options and you go ahead with this one. And this is for Now what structure the arrows are pointing at? So this is the same radiograph here uh, and this is the arrow out here. So again, this is a periapical. Oh, I see there are two laterals, there are two centrals. Uh, we know this is an incisive foramen. This is the anterior nasal spine. What is this? Now, because this is anterior nasal spine, this cannot be anterior nasal spine, correct? This is a nasal concha. So nasal soft tissue is an option here, but again, soft tissues would be you know, the nose, <laughs> that would not appear on the radiograph. Nasal concha is the right answer. Septum is a radiopic structure and that too in the center. So that is not the right option. Floor of the nasal cavity. Well, if, if, if this was pointing somewhere like one arrow, two arrow, three arrow, then, then probably I could have said it's a floor. But it's specifically pointing at one of the structures, so it's nasal concha. Now, what structure is this? Uh, Sub-question four. Uh, very good question and uh, this 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 dilemma you might have in your exam now this is actually a good radiograph you know it's pretty easy but what if what if there was a premolar here and uh, example it had caries approaching pulp and then you would have seen a structure like this you would be confused right you would you would just go on to bang on say it's a periapical infection and you wouldn't be wrong because uh, it would be right on the pex of a tooth which is having um, caries in the pulp but uh, thankfully the ADC did not try to confuse you that much it just made the premolar disappear and it's pointing out to this now you can argue whether this is a residual cyst or you know a residual cyst is a radicular cyst and the tooth is extracted but it's left behind but no, uh, this, this doesn't look like it, uh, though the differential diagnosis can be that. Uh, this is a classic place where 
the mantle nerve erupts or rather comes out of the mandible. Uh, it's called as the mantle foramen. Its location is between the roots of the two premolars and one premolar is not here. So yes, this is mantle foramen. If a premolar was here with a carious a uh, uh, curious involvement of the pulp which was seen on the radiograph and the apex of the tooth was ending here and there would be superimposition of this over the root then you may have marked it as a radicular cyst but thankfully that is not the situation here hence we go with the mental foramen it's not an artifact if this this was present somewhere at the bottom out here i may have thought it's an artifact uh, but it's not so I eliminate the other options and the only option that I remain with even if I did not know the answer would be mental for it. Now what structure is the arrow pointing at again? So this is all basically just one shot answers like I'd mentioned to you uh, Do not make a mistake uh, This you can solve it very easily. It would take you less than a minute to answer all of these questions that thereby you'll be saving your time and answering more complicated questions. See here, the scenario is also not big. The sub questions are also not that big. It's pretty straightforward, you know, just what is this? What is that? Answer it, move ahead. Uh, so here two arrows are pointing in an exam. Any one of the arrows can be given to you. So uh, if I see this arrow, this is mylohyoid ridge. If in exam, this arrow is given, it's external oblique ridge. If the arrow was pointing here, it would be inferior alveolar nerve canal. If the arrow was pointing here, it would be inferior border of the mandible. Understood? So you, you are expected to know these landmarks. Uh, I'm sure in your anatomy classes and in BDS-1, if not in BDS-1, definitely in your clinical postings in oral surgery, they would have handed you a mandible and you would have touched and palpated the coronoid process, the condyler, the external oblique ridge. Uh, you, you know where to insert your uh, needle in inferior alveolar canal blocks. So you're expected to know these landmarks okay so if you don't it's okay just go ahead google learn remember the image try not to make a mistake in these questions please and even if say you are not sure you can still solve the question by elimination of the other options like example this arrow was there and i'm not sure what this is i definitely know it's not inferior border of mandible because it would be here I definitely know it's not a canal because canal is a radiolucent space. Now, I may have been confused between external and oblique ridge and the mylohyoid ridge. But I know the external oblique ridge would finally go towards the external surface of the mandible. And the mylohyoid muscle comes attachment here. The mylohyoid muscle cannot be attached on such a top area. You understand? So, even by the rule of elimination, I would have still ended up with the mylohyoid ridge out here. So I hope this helps you uh, in solving. Please, please don't underestimate the radiographic questions. They are really scorable questions and try not to make a mistake on them. I hope this time the video comes proper. <laughs> Thank you.